Well, I think in my career there have been a handful of jewels that I can remember that have stuck out as being absolutely extraordinary. This is certainly one of them. The first time I saw it was when we sold it in Zurich in 1979. I was just bowled over by it. I think it's difficult to exaggerate the importance of these emeralds. Certainly in the 35 years that I've been working in the auction business, this is undoubtedly the greatest row of original, fabulous quality Colombian stones, 11 of them perfectly matched. And what's extraordinary is that if you wanted to describe to somebody what color a great emerald is, you would point at these stones. They're like green berries. It's what is known as the old mine material. The emeralds themselves are absolutely remarkable. We've estimated the weight to be well over 500 carats, which is a huge amount. They would have been mined in Colombia, in my opinion, probably in the 16th century, and then would have been traded with India. The emeralds are typical of a way of wearing emeralds in India in the 17th century, cutting them into almost rolled pebble beads, and then characteristically drilled along the main axis with this rather thick drill hole. And so one can easily imagine these being worn around the neck of a Maharaja or a prince, and then subsequently finding their way into France at the turn of the 19th century. There's really no period of European history where jewelry was more glamorous and more abundant than the Belle Epoque at the end of the 19th century. Prince Guido Henkel von Donnersmark was, at the time, perhaps the richest man in Germany and one of the richest men in Europe. He came from a family that had made their fortune principally in mining and in finance, but also owning large estates in Silesia. In 1887, he married a Russian aristocrat called the Katerina Slepsov, and this tiara was commissioned for her as a gift. We know that the Donners Marks were commissioning jewels from Boucheron, but also from Chaumet at the end of the 19th century. And this tiara is not signed, but for me, I would pump for Chaumet as the maker. Probably dating about 1897 to 1900. The design of the tiara, the base of the tiara, is typical of the late part of the 19th century, of this turn of the century Belle Epoque very delicate garland forms set with diamonds and studded with these larger cushioned, slightly yellow diamonds, which contrast perfectly, I think, with the emeralds. When we first offered this tiara for sale in Zurich in 1979, uh, we mentioned that it was a family tradition that the emeralds had formerly been part of the French crown jewels. It's probably more precise to say that they may well have been part of the personal jewellery collection of Empress Eugenie. The context of the sale in which uh, we've placed this tiara is in this section, which has become an annual event now in Geneva every May, of noble jewels, which are precisely that. They're jewels that we've collected uh, from noble and aristocratic families, principally in Europe. For me, this is the most glamorous jewel that we've offered at auction in the last 30 years, in fact, since it was last offered. I can think of no other jewel that sums up the glamour and the grandeur of the Belle Epoque, as well as this.